Hey, hey guys. Um, there's a uh, one more sequence I wanted to show you how to make a um an nth term formula for with your calculators, and it's uh, this one here is a geometric sequence. Um, so we're gonna do basically the same thing. Well, not not really the same thing. There's gonna be a, a couple different steps, but for the most part, it'll be very similar to what we just did. So write a formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence. And very much like the last one, you do have to identify the sequence. Um, you do have to know what type you're dealing with. Um, this has a common ratio of three, and uh, it's not arithmetic and so forth. Now, there is a, a small problem with this stuff. When it comes to sequences, we're going to kind of, I'm going to say cheat, but we're going to kind of make it, we're going to make an exponential function. Just like you just saw at the top on the last one we did, mx plus b, we're going to be doing an exponential function regression and exponential functions have different um there's a, a there's a tighter criteria for an exponential function in other words if it's an exponential function this common ratio we talk about with geometric sequences is not allowed to be negative if it's an exponential function and the reason is for all values of x it won't be defined if it's negative now for n's it's okay it can be an alternating signs but we so in other words, if you have a common ratio that's negative, this method is not going to work because your calculator will tell you a domain error, okay? So just remember, if you're looking at this data right here in f of n, and you have alternating signs, you're not going to be able to use this method, okay? But for most of your application problems, that doesn't happen. So you can still use this for your application problems. So let's get started here and um, put this data in here. We've got 2, 6, 18, 54, and we'll show you. And I'll post the keystrokes down there too for this one as well. I did last time. All right, so oh, let me clear the history. All right, so what we do here is just like last time, keystrokes are go to stat menu. You're going to edit the stat menu. And for your x values or ends, you're going to put one, two, three, or however many data points there are, that's the number you put in there. So we we have four, so we're going to put those four in. Now over here, we're going to put in our sequence. It goes two, six, eighteen, and fifty-four. All right, now stat again. You're going to calculate. All right, you're not going to calculate a linear regression. This is not linear, it's exponential. So you're gonna come down here and see that expo reg right here, or X, EXP reg, that's your guy. Exponential regression. Yes, we're using L1 and L2. Enter. Okay, now there's our exponential function. So we need to interpret what this has given us. And this is a little bit more confusing than the last one. I'll have to admit that, okay? So I'll screenshot all this in, in the notes for you, but the video is probably much more helpful. So what we, what we have there is, is telling us, well, let me go back to that shot real quick, just to you know, make sure real clear. They're saying y equals a times b raised to the x power. That caret right there means that x is in the exponent which is an exponential function, okay? So I might be jumping ahead of myself just a little bit here. An exponential function is defined like this, y equals a b to the x power. Notice the close cousin, I didn't have this talk with this because this is in our next unit, is f of one, that's probably a, right? r, that's b, to the n minus one. So they're not quite the same. This guy is backed up one, or he's pushed forward one. You can just kind of see it that way. He's a function of real numbers. He's not, he's discrete, right? He can only have one, two, three, four, and so on. What they're telling me though, they're saying, um, A is 0.6667. Well, it turns out that if, you, if you've done enough of this, you realize, a is 0.66667 is that's that's two thirds, right? And they're saying B is three. Let's just go back and look at that. B is three, A is 
um, 0.6667. Um, so what they're saying for us to use this substitution to make it work, our f of n would be equal to two thirds times three. Now they're saying to the x, so we'd have to put an n here. Don't put that in minus one. I right, said, so what we really want to do is test this and see does that give us our sequence. If it gives me the sequence, it's fine to use, right? This is the formula it gave us. Now, like I said, you want to test it to see if it works. So, and I, well, the thing is you won't always have to test this, but it's not as nice as the linear one. It's just, it's really not. So if you put in a 1 for n, 3 to the 1 times 2 thirds is 2. The 3's are going to cancel. So it is working, right? 2 thirds times 3 squared, if you put in a 2 here, if n is 2, you get a 9. 3 into 9 goes t um, 3 times 2 is 6. So this guy is producing our sequence. It's a different form. It's a different form. Um, and if I, if I had time in here, we talk about some exponent rules. We really could write this and make it look like this. And um, it, But in, in terms of this video, it's just not worth the time right now. But this does work. Um, I'd like to show you how we would have normally written it. We would have said um, our first term is 2 common ratio is 3. Actually, that was actually faster <laughs> than the calculator method, honestly. But they're the same thing. Um, these are exactly the same thing. They produce exactly the same terms. Um, this is just rearranged differently. So um, maybe this video is helpful for you. Um, if, if not, let me know. We can, we can probably work through some of these issues in this um, in here. This is sort of like if you're in a bind and you just need a function. Um, or if you just, uh, maybe some of the application problems, this could be helpful. Let's let me know what you think of it. All right. Thanks guys.